Welcome to Bled Talk. I'm your host, Samuel Bledsoe, and I couldn't be more excited to have you on this exhilarating journey with me. Bled Talk is the ultimate podcast for English learners, designed to inspire and motivate you on your quest to master the English language. Every single week, we bring you captivating conversations with native English speakers, offering you an unparalleled opportunity to soak up authentic vocabulary and expressions. Get ready to unlock the secrets of fluency as we dive deep into vibrant dialogues, share inspiring stories, and provide invaluable insights to help you level up your language skills. Together, we will conquer English like never before. So are you ready to join me on this thrilling adventure? Let's dive right in. Hey, it's Sam. In this episode, we had a couple difficulties with the audio, so we apologize for the inconvenience. But the conversation is a must-listen, so don't mind the audio and enjoy the episode. Thank you. All right, everybody. Welcome to Bled Talk again. We're here today with a good friend of mine. His name is Zach Bingham, and uh, we've known each other, I would say, for about, it's almost been five years. It's, it's almost six. Six? Oh, okay. So it's been six years. It's been five and a half years. Uh, five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's it's crazy because we we actually both met each other before before Brazil. Well, technically before Brazil, but it was only about 15 minutes and then we both got on the plane and, and came over. Uh, but, but Zach, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you. Tell us where you're from and, uh, kind of who, who you are, you know, and what, what made you decide to, uh, to visit Brazil? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I appreciate you having me on, man. Um, yeah, it's been kind of fun as I thought about the questions and stuff you asked me, just reflecting on my time in Brazil. Um, but yeah, a little bit about me. I'm from Utah, um, lived in Arizona for a bit, but then we, we ended up moving back to Utah and essentially have lived here my whole life. Um, and when it came to uh, the, the decision uh, whether I wanted to uh, serve an LDS mission or not, um, yeah, it, it really came down to to one thing, and that was just um, being able to to uh, spread the the word of God and His gospel, right? Um, and so, um, really being able to help uh, people out wherever I was called, and it just like happened to be Brazil, which I am super grateful for. Looking back, um, but yeah, I, I guess like preparing myself, but before I came to Brazil specifically trying to learn the language and stuff. It was crazy. I'd never spoken a foreign language before. Um, so yeah, tried to do everything I, I could before getting to Brazil, but we both know that that uh, definitely was not the case. It took us quite some time to, <laughs> to learn the language. Uh, but yeah, but just that whole experience, getting ready to come to Brazil, um, meeting you in the airport. I remember it like it was yesterday, me and Danny walking across the room and seeing all you guys. Um, and going through like the, the terminal going through, um, uh, customs and everything else. And just being so scared that we we're going to get caught up or like in and <laughs> jail somehow. We just had no idea what was going on, what people were saying. Um, but then, yeah, finally getting to Brazil and like riding that bus from the airport, um, to, to our, our, our school essentially. Um, and really just like seeing the country for the first time like I, I just remember it like it was yesterday it was crazy um and it was just super eye-opening at least for me i had never been out of the country before and so um yeah just just getting into sao paulo was was nuts um and definitely am super super grateful for uh my time that i got to spend there oh definitely and i you, you were you were talking about our first day and i i remember uh, I remember, like you said, when we got there, it was, I, I don't know why, but we were just all like confused. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know where to go. Trying, trying to follow the signs and, and doing what the people say. I remember there was, there was one missionary who he, uh, I think he, his passport didn't work or his visa had some type of issue. And we were like, should we wait for him? Should we, should we keep going? What do we do? Do we leave, do we leave a man behind or do we? Do we continue? And and I also remember getting into getting into the van to to go to the the training center. And 
I was crazy. Do you remember when the, the motorcycles would pass by right next to the van? Oh my goodness, dude. I couldn't believe it. It, it was, was nuts. It was so crazy. I remember we were just glued to the, you know, glued to the windows looking at everything. And it was, it was right in December. So it was right before Christmas. And we saw all of these Christmas decorations out, but it was like a hundred degrees and yeah, it was, it was really confusing. It was a, but it was a fun time. And, and tell us, you know, how, how was it those, those first couple months in Brazil, like with Portuguese and trying to adapt to the culture? It was uh, definitely eye opening to say the least. I know we had like our six week course uh, of training where we're trying to be a, as immersed as possible. Um, going to our different classes and just like trying to learn the language. Uh, but I think once we got out of the the training center and we got out into real life, it was a whole different thing. Um, so I was living with another Brazilian um, who barely spoke any English at all. And so it, it, at that time, it was like I really had no choice but to fully immerse myself in the language um and, and learn portuguese if i didn't it was literally it was just gonna be me sitting there by myself unable to speak unable to communicate unable to really do anything um and so it was like really um uh, important for me to uh, immerse myself and to um make sure that i was studying and doing all those things and uh to to really try and get a better grasp on that language and those first months were tough like they, they really were, um, I had a really hard time. Um, honestly, it's probably one of the toughest times in my life, just looking back because of the, the lack of communication that I had, um, just on a day-to-day -day basis. Like it was super frustrating because I knew what I wanted to say. I would look up the word, I would try and say it. And then like the dude I was living with, he would look at me like I'm an idiot and be like, well, what are you trying to say? I'm like, oh, I'm, good. and then I would show him the word, and he'd be like, oh, you say it this way. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but I think from that whole experience, like, um, the more that I started talking to to other people and really trying to apply the the things and words that I had, I had learned from my study in the morning, um, just on a day by day basis, the quicker um, phrases in uh, the language started coming to me. And I would probably say it was around like five to six months um, when I finally felt like I was able to have like pretty basic conversation, be able to understand a majority of what other people were saying um, and was able to like get around and be okay with, with the limited knowledge of Portuguese that I had. Um, but yeah, those, those first few months, man, they were, they were crazy. It was, it was tough for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and, and what's crazy is, you know, we were, we both were lucky enough that we kind of, we kind of went to the same place, but we, we didn't see each other a lot. And so, uh, the English was difficult. And I, I remember because I was sent to the end of the world basically. And, uh, dude, there was nobody that spoke English, like nobody at all. And it was so, it was so difficult. I felt so alone and, uh, like you said, you know, you would look up the words, you, um, you know, imagine everybody who's listening, imagine you're walking and you don't have a smartphone to pull out and get out your translator real quick or anything. You have to pull out a small dictionary, look for the word, and then hope that you use it in the right context and, and all of these things. And it, it was difficult. It was really hard. And, but like you said, I think after, I, I would say for me, after about two or three months, I could, you know, I could ask for bread maybe at the, at the store. I could find out where the bathroom is, uh, and not say the other word. <laughs> exactly, and not say not say something that that I would regret later. So, uh, yeah. for me, I, it was it was really tough. It's really difficult, and I think something that really was difficult for me was the food. Um, mm. I don't I don't know about you, and I'll ask you here in just a second. But for me. I remember our first days uh, here in Brazil, and we would go to the cafeteria to eat. And every lunch, there was there was beans and there were rice. And it was funny because the first day I went, I was like, oh, okay, you know, lots of people from different places. 
So this is probably something that's common. So, you know, well, I'll, I'll try it. I tried it. I didn't like it. And I was like, that's okay. They'll, they'll have something different tomorrow. Then we come back and there was more rice and more beans. And I said, well, I guess maybe they just made extra, you know, maybe this is from leftover from yesterday and they don't want to waste it. So I, I think that's, that's probably right. And then the next day there was rice and beans again. And I was like, what is wrong? Why is there always all this rice, all these beans? And like, there's no, you know, there really was no like American food. And, you know, we would pick out things that we knew what they were. But for me, uh, the rice and beans were killer. Like my first, my, my first place that I stayed, uh, I lost, I think, I think I lost like 10 or 15 kilos. So I don't know, like, like almost 30 pounds just because I, I walked a lot and I really didn't like the rice and the beans. And so I didn't eat a lot of them. So it was really difficult for me to adapt to 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 the food that they have here i don't know what was it like for you it was uh definitely in the cafeteria man that was honestly probably the worst food i've ever had in my life like i got so sick of it so quick do you remember like the we'd have like oatmeal it was like that gross oatmeal stuck in the morning and like is this what people eat are you serious it was like this like chunky like milky stuff and i'm like no and so I ended up just eating like an apple or a banana or something in the morning. That was it. And then, yeah, it was the same thing. It was like freaking beans and rice day after day. And then you put like this little fairy dust or whatever. And I was so confused. I'm like, what is this? Like, it looked like sawdust or something. Right. I, I always tell people that it, like, it's like sand. I was like, yeah, do you have sand that you put on your, on your plate? Yeah. 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 Um, and I was always just like, what in the world? Why am I, why am I going to put this on my rice and beans? Um, but yeah, as we left like the training facility and got into like the real world, um, honestly, I love the food. I thought it was great. I ended up like, uh, feijoada and stroganoff, like, dude, those were some of my favorite meals and I miss it a little bit, to be honest. Like, I don't know. It's just like oh, the yeah. way we eat here is a hundred percent different, um, than, than the food in Brazil, but dude, the churrasco, my goodness. Like I, I, I got to pay a pretty penny to to go get some good Brazilian churrasco here in the well, states. Yeah, and and in the United States, like even when you go to a good churrasco place, like it's not, it's not the same. I remember because I, I went with my dad to a place in the United States called Tucanos, and mm-hmm. um, I thought, yeah, from what I remembered of Tucanos, I was like, oh, I think it's still pretty good. And this was after I had lived here in Curitiba for a year. And I was very disappointed <laughs> with the uh, food. Because I was like, when I go to a Shuhasku in, in Curitiba, I pay maybe $15 at the most. If if it's expensive, it's like 20 And mm-hmm. I have all of these options. I have different cheeses, different meats, all these really good things. That, you know, when I was on the mission in Sao Paulo, I didn't even get to go to a, a Shuhasco place. And here I've been to so many and they're so good. And I went back to uni- to the U.S. and it was so disappointing. And you pay like $30, $40. You know? Oh, it's so expensive. Yeah. No, it's ridiculous. There is one place that I am hoping um, is the outlier. Um, there's a place called Fogo de Chão. Have you heard of it? There's one yeah, in they, they, and a lot of like bigger cities. Uh huh. Um, have you been there? Pretty big one here. Yeah, I, I haven't been there because I don't think that they don't have one here in Curitiba, but they have one in okay. in São Paulo, and I'd like okay. to hear that it's it's really good. Yeah, I've been when I was in Vegas, was trying to talk my friends into it, but it's like 50, 60 bucks a plate. So my friends are like, no, nah, we, we don't need to go there. I'm like, come on, guys. Just like one. It's, it's worth inside. it. It's worth it. I know. I know. I, I need to I need to work on my sales skills, dude. I couldn't sell them on it. Um, but anyways, yeah, no. The, I honestly think uh, Chujasco in Brazil, the meats, like everything. I don't know. I think it's some match. I love it. It's oh, something yeah, I'm not I, mean, I think, you know, and it, it's funny because like, you go from when you live in the U.S. and you've already had shuhasco, you've already had these foods, 
for for a long time uh you you start to miss it right you start to miss brazilian food and it's like the same thing when you come to brazil like i i love the food here but i can't tell you how much i miss like just some good old american cooking and and i was it's funny because i tell people that and they're always like oh but american food is so greasy it's so fatty there's all of these other things and I, I i tell them i'm like it really depends on where you're from because mm-hmm. in the south of the united states the food is uh, it's wonderful it's delicious and and that's where that's where i'm from that's the type of food that that i'm used to eating and so you know sometimes i do miss some good like good nice mac and cheese and some really good fried chicken you know with the the crunchy skin and um, you know, just a lot of it, the sodas that we have in the U S that we don't have here, here is just, it's just Coke. And, and you know, that's it. Whereas the U S you got Dr. Pepper, you got root beer, you got Mountain Dew, you have all these other different things. And I personally, so many choices. yeah, personally, a big thing, uh, that I, that I miss is, uh, it's like the milk basically, because like milk in the United States is so much better. In my opinion, it's a lot thicker. And, uh, you know, chocolate milk in the United States is wonderful. And, uh, you know, just all those things, ice cream is delicious, but here it's hard to find like a good, a good ice cream. That's not expensive. That's the thing. Cause here you can find good ice cream. You just have to pay more than a pretty penny. You have to pay probably two or three. It's, it's, it's crazy. How, how, oh my goodness. But I can only imagine. But yeah. in. And I want you to tell me how how do you think coming to Brazil changed your your worldview of things? Like how how did Brazil change you basically? How did it make you think about about different things that you see in the world? Because I I know for me, you know, coming here changed a lot of how I how I saw you the U.S. and and the rest of the world and people in general. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think that's a a great question because yeah, like I mentioned before, I had never left uh, the states before coming to Brazil, um, and so yeah, just like being there and living there for for two years was definitely very eye opening. I think I de- definitely on the spectrum of like um, there was a lot of people who were very well off. They were rich. Like I, I think living in like Saudi area um in Jabaquara, like downtown um definitely saw a lot lot more of like the the richer side of brazil um but then yeah going to like Giadema um or even uh medicinopolis or some of these other little neighborhoods i it, it was like crazy to see um the 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 poverty i mean it's just how it is right um and that was definitely eye-opening i think um, when meeting those people, talking to those people out and seeing how happy they were still, they still were, even though, um, they were, they were living with so little, um, it, it definitely changed my perspective on, um, just the, the, the material things in life. Um, like it, it definitely, uh, made me realize like, okay, you, you don't have to have all the things in the world to be happy. Like, you can live with very minimal um and still have a great life still still be happy still um love and and help one another and um i think just like reflecting on how that's been able to uh change my perspective just like overall um i i think it's made me a lot more um just um i would say like uh, accepting um with with people the way they are um and not re- at least i i try not to be as judgmental as i probably was before coming to brazil yeah no definitely i agree i think uh it was funny because i i remember whenever i found out that i was gonna go to brazil for for my mission and i was thinking oh my goodness i'm gonna walk through the forest i'm gonna cut down trees and i'm gonna you know i'm gonna be doing all of these crazy things and and it's not right that's not it's not what it was you know some follow is a forest but it's it's a concrete forest there is there is building after building and 
Um, there's, you know, like you said, there's a lot of people who are doing well, they're very well off and they're living great. And, but there's a lot of people who, who aren't right, who are in poverty and there's a lot of problems, but they, they still are able to be happy. They're still able to move forward. Uh, you know, you can see, I think for me, I was able to see just how much I don't need to be happy, if that makes sense. Cause I think uh, in the U.S., you know, is even even people who don't have a lot of money, they still have a lot of luxuries that they don't realize. You know, I in my family, I I thought that my family was was in a pretty bad economic state for a while, and but you know, we had we have a dryer, we 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 had a washing machine, we had you know we had a dishwasher, or we have a car, all of these things. Um, are a lot more common in the United States than they are here. You know, if you meet somebody and they have a washer and a dryer, it's like, that's crazy. You know, it's, it's super, yeah. super high up there. If, if someone has a washer, dryer and a car and a microwave and all of those, all of these little things that we don't think about, uh, they're, they're usually much, much better off. And in the U S that's not the case. I always tell people that, um, when it comes to Brazil, like, the amount of money that you that you spend on things and whatnot is it's it's a lot more expensive here than it is in the US. Even if you were to, you know, trade dollars to to eyes or whatever, you know, somebody in the US if they work if they make minimum wage, it's maybe I I would say today it's like what, two thousand dollars a month, thereabouts, maybe a little bit less, maybe after taxes like a thousand, four hundred, thousand five hundred. Depends on the state. But yeah, uh, you can still you can still buy things with what you get. And here, if you make you know the minimum wage is like a thousand two hundred reais, and you know as much as I I'm I'm somebody who is in favor of you looking for better jobs and for equal payment and more payment uh, options. It's just what what does a thousand reais pay? For? You know, forty four hours a week, and you get paid a thousand two hundred reais at the at the end of the month. That's, you know, that's, I did the math. That's less than like three or four AIs an hour, which is, is not, you know, doesn't, doesn't do a lot. And so I think in the U.S., I think at least for me coming to Brazil really helped me understand just how, how good we have it in the U.S. You know? I think for me, that, yeah. that was something big. Um, Dude, the dishwasher. I, I forgot about the washer dryer. I, I don't know how, um, but yeah, those are just like little things you don't think about day to day where um, it really does make a big difference. Like, yeah, having a car, being able to to drive wherever you need to go. Like there's, there's so many of those little things that we definitely take for granted. And even just right now, like those are things that didn't even cross my mind. Cause I'm just like, what it, it's been four, four years since we've been back almost. Yeah. But it was, yeah. Um, and so no, it's, that's, that's just crazy. Think of back again, like, oh yeah, having to go and hang out, uh, my clothes to dry or just hand washing everything. Um, as far as dishes go, like, yeah, there's so many little things that, uh, we just take for granted here in the States for sure. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Um, but we are we're already at the end of the first part of, of this interview, this podcast. I you know, uh, our listeners they have they have things that they have to do sometimes, and so uh, we like to keep them we like to keep it relatively short. But Zach, I want to I want to thank you for being on this first part, and everybody else, stay tuned for the next one because the next the next one is is part two. We're gonna keep on continuing the conversation, and uh, and you guys can definitely listen to it and, and continue to learn a little bit more, but we thank you for it and everybody have a wonderful day and have a good or a good night, depending on what time it is and stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to bled talk. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us for more content. We are on all of the popular podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple podcast, and we're even on YouTube. Don't forget to send in your questions and your suggestions. Thank you once again and have a great day.